Welcome to the tool room. Today I'm going to do a video about prepping wood for a project that I'm working on and it's going to be walnut and um, we're going to use some of the planes here and talk about using the Stanley planes um, although we have some English planes as well and some others but uh, predominantly today I want to talk about these Bailey designed uh, Stanley bench planes how to use them how to tweak them so that they do good work for you. So I've picked out a few planes to get started with and um, a number two, a number three, a number four, a number ten, a forty scrub plane and a number eight um, all uh, Stanley planes and uh, I may have to add a few more in there as we go along maybe just to show you a few things. Some are older, some are newer and um, that's going to change uh, the uh, capacity to adjust them um, because they upgraded their designs over the years and we'll check out a few of those differences. So we're in the shop and I brought out a few different planes and uh, the first thing I wanted to talk to you about was um, you can see there's a wide assortment of sizes here. They're all very similar. The ones in the back are all Bailey designed um, Stanleys and they all work on the same principles. But, um, but you see all the different sizes makes a difference for whatever you're working on. We're going to today work on some of this walnut. Um, to complete this project that I'm working on back here and this is rough sawn so we need to smooth it out and then we need to square up the boards and uh, and get them prepped to uh, be sized for the cabinet doors but I wanted to show you first of all because a lot of people wonder why people need such small planes versus large ones and I think uh, what's important is to size the plane to the work that you're doing. Now, here's a little piece of boxwood here, and um, if I were to use this plane, which is the number eight, that big plane on it, um, it would be awkward, and I wouldn't be able to see my work. So, uh, when you're smoothing something and not jointing it, um, you use a plane that's closer to the size of the block that you're working on so that you can see uh, what you're doing. Now, you see this is also rough sawn because you can you can hear and you can see these lines. So when you're smoothing a board, um, you want to use a plane that's proportional to your work. Um, and I'm going to talk in a second about uh, setting up these planes. Um, or maybe I'll get to that right away. But I wanted to first mention to you that you, you really want to use a plane that matches the size and the proportions of what you're working on. So first, I thought I'd go over the parts of the plane. So when you see a plane in the store um, for sale, there's a few things that you have to consider. Um, number one is to remove the blade, or iron, as it's called, and this lever. Now, a lot of us refer to this as a lever cap, but in the 1939 Stanley catalog, they just refer to it as a lever. Um, and they describe this hole here, which changes shape over the years. It turns more into a kidney shape rather than this keyhole shape. So um, we remove the blade and the chip breaker. And let me show you that. That's a two part piece. This part here is the chip breaker and this is the iron or blade. Now, the blade has this keyhole shape on it, and the reason for that is you can loosen this, pull this back, turn it, and separate the two easily without having to hold it together and then screw this in. Now, you see the chip breaker comes off like this and has this round, and you see there's not a lot of the blade exposed at all, and there shouldn't be. It should be just enough to cut, and th this piece here 
with this curve, we'll send the curl out of the plane and upward and away from the uh, mouth. So this is an important part of the plane. Now, whenever you're looking at a plane in a store or something, take this out and make sure this isn't rusted and that you can get this all apart. And then examine really well this end of the blade here, or the iron, and, uh, and check to see if it's pitted here. Um, because if it's pitted and you can't get a nice straight edge, um, you'll either have to do a lot of sanding down to get that flat, or you may have to get a new blade. The second thing to look for is uh, this, this emblem here, because that changes over the years too. This is Stanley patent applied for 1892, and that's going to determine the age of the plane somewhat as well, although those things could be switched out. So the next thing is to look, and this is called the frog. Now, I have a frog here that's already out of the plane to show you what it looks like. This is the frog of an early plane, and the way you can tell this frog is early is you see there's no lever coming up here, and this is a, called a lateral adjuster. And the ones that Stanley had early ones were these ones with a disc, but earlier than that were these that have no lateral adjustment. So when you turn this, it, there's nothing there to move the blade from side to side. These are harder to set up. They're very collectible because of their age, but they're very hard to get the blade exactly where you want and tighten down. So this is the original, and then they went to a new design. This all changed as well. The other thing that changed is the size of this. You see uh, on the newer ones, you can see how large that brass knob is compared to the older one. And on the oldest ones, it has writing inside here that have the patent dates. So these are also very collectible, but they're not very good to use because you don't have a lot of fine adjustments. Now, this plane that we're talking about, um, the frog has the lateral adjustment and it's got two screws that hold it here to the sole of the plane. This is the sole. And this is a corrugated plane, as you can see these corrugations here. And some planes are smooth bottom and some are corrugated. That's another thing to look for. Um, and that's really more of a preference thing. Some people like the smooth, some people prefer the corrugated. Um, I like both, I have one of each. Um, so then there's writing on this here and that will also help you date the, the uh, plane if it's important to you to date it. It's not always that important. I like a, a plane with a low knob, and this is a beautiful rosewood handle here, but that has nothing to do with how well this plane works. So if you're going to buy a plane as a collector, these are all things you need to be concerned about. But if you're going to buy it as a user, then you wanna be concerned about having this adjuster here for being able to turn the blade and pivot the blade. And the more you pivot it, the more blade will stick out one side or the other. And you want it to be really parallel to this when you're actually going to use it in the setup. Now, there's another adjustment that's missing from this one, and that's back here. And what that adjuster does, and I'll show you that on a plane that has one. Let's see. Here's one that has it. This is a number five and a quarter, and I think you might be able to see in there there's two screws, and there's a little saddle that goes around one of these screws, and what that does is when you tighten it down, it moves this frog front to back, and that controls the opening that you wind up with on the uh, throat here, or mouth of the plane. So you want this to be nice and snug and tight. You don't want too much of a gap back here, but the more important gap is the one from the edge of the blade to the uh, front of the throat. And that allows you to do it from here with a screwdriver. And um, rather than having to adjust it 
and sight it, tighten it down, put the blade in, put the lever cap back on, try it out, take it back out, adjust it back again. So that was a big advancement. And that came about with the bedrocks. And the bedrock planes, here's a bedrock plane. And um, this is not the earliest bedrocks. The earliest bedrocks looked just like those other ones and didn't have this flat side. And then they came out with this flat side to distinguish the two. And the bedrocks have numbers on them that begin with six. So this is a number five size plane, but it's, since it's a bedrock, it's number 605. But that's a whole nother story. So let's get back to these parts. Now, one thing that I said that was uh, not a little incomplete is that between this style and the ones that had none, they had another adjuster that instead of having this rotating disc, it was just the piece of metal bent up, so it was a little flat portion, and that would push back and forth on the blade to pivot to pivot it. Um, uh, another, another way of dating the plane, as, as a, a lot of collectors want to do. So um, what we want to talk about next is the, the tote or handle or the, from, in the back. Um, this is called the tote, and this is the front knob. Now, uh, the older ones have a little short knob like that, and the newer ones have this taller knob. I don't know if you can see the difference there. Um, I prefer, in appearance, the lower knob, and I tend to put my thumb on top of it this way and use it like that rather than holding it like that. Um, so the big knob kind of gets in my way. Um, here in this case, you can see that uh, I'm just holding on to the front knob like that. And um, that's very comfortable to me. Here's another important part of putting together a plane and, and using a plane is to have a screwdriver that fits properly all of these screws. You don't want to use one that's sloppy because you'll wind up taking the slots and distorting them if you have a loose screwdriver. So in uh, adjusting these, you want to make sure you have a screwdriver that has uh, a nice snug fit into the screws and doesn't turn a lot. Now, there's a brass piece here and a rod that goes down and screws into the base here. So this is, has a small hole going up through it and then a deeper hole up here. And that's what holds the knob tight. And it has a similar thing right here and a threaded rod that goes back here that threads into this. If you see a plane that has a screw coming through here or through here, that means that it's been broken and you don't really want to buy that. So uh, be, be aware of those things when you're looking at them in the store. So these two screws here adjust the way the frog goes forward and back. And what I use as a guide for where the frog sits is I sight down the frog, this, this plate here, and I make sure that it is just slightly behind this piece of the throat right here. And if you look down like that, you can see where it is. And then I snug these two screws up gently Never put a lot of pressure on something you're screwing into a cast iron piece or you're apt to break it. And, um, and then once I have that, then I take my blade and my chip breaker, and after I've sharpened it, I move the chip breaker onto the blade, and I just leave about a sixteenth of an inch showing of the blade out here, and then I snug this up nice and tight.
Then I place the blade onto the frog like that and make sure it's seated well. If it's sticking up, being pushed up, then your frog is most likely too far forward or too far back and it's not allowing the blade to fit through this opening down here properly. So make sure that's good and flat. You can also loosen this up when you first put your uh, lever cap on, close it up and you see that is fairly loose. Then you can come in with a screwdriver and just snug it up. Not a lot of pressure. Then you can pull it open, feel it, make sure it comes down snugly. So for adjusting the plane, what I do is I sight down from the front to the back and I extend my blade out by rotating the forward advancement knob under the tote and I bring it up so I can see an edge of it right here. You see along here? And um, it's a little piece of uh, a shaving still on this side. And then what I do is I take the lateral adjuster and I can move it over to one side and you see how one part of the blade is sticking out and I move it the other way until I've got it nice and parallel and then to the to the sole of the plane and then I can back that blade back in and it won't change that uh, side to side adjustment but it will give me an idea of uh, how much is sticking out and that it's parallel to the bottom of the plane. So what I'm doing here is I take it back to where the blade, there's no bite. And then I gradually bring it forward until I feel it start to bite. And you see that's a fairly fine shaving that I'm getting there. And um, that's all fine and good, but you see this piece here is really long. If I use this plane on it to smooth it out, then I won't make this flat across here because this plane can go in and out. So this is what I was talking about is proportional. Since this piece is this long, I want to use a larger plane. So when I'm coming across here, I get a nice shaving. But also, because this is long and flat, it will flatten this board. It won't ride in and out. I could also come in here with a larger piece, but you see how big this is compared to the board? This is overkill, and, um, and it means that I won't be able to see my work as I go. So I pick a plane that is proportional to the work. Now, this was a piece of rough sawn walnut, and you can see the saw marks here, and you can see here how they're starting to disappear. And what I do is I go across it, and I keep the plane flat to the board, and um, then I can see, I know the plane is flat, and I know the board is going to be flat, and I can see that I'm removing wood that is not where these pieces are. So all of this area here, in order to make it flat, has to come down to the level of the bottom of these saw marks. I'm not gonna just plane this area here because yes, that would make these saw marks go away, but the problem is that this would be lower and this would be higher and that is not gonna be a flat straight edge. So you have to go all the way across the piece until you see these start to disappear and you can take it down and then go to your side you can always come back to this but you can examine different parts of the wood as you go to make sure like here's a hole here so 
I'll square this up to this, and then I'll go to this side, and I'll find the best side that I want to use, and then I'll remove more of the side that I don't want to use. And that way, I get the best piece for the job. Now, that's another nice little thing there. You see, from here forward, it took wood off. And right in this area here, it took wood off. This is nice and smooth. This is nice and smooth, but not here. And that means that there's an undulation here and offside here, and that these have to come down before it'll cut here. And that's what you want to do to flatten a board, is you want to remove all of the high rather than trying to dig out the low. So here you see some of the shavings that we were getting off. This was a little thicker earlier, and then as we got down to a smoother board, um, nice and flat, you can see that some of the shavings are really, really super whisper thin. And that's, that's what we want, is a nice flat board like that. Now the next thing we're, we're, that we're going to do is we're going to square this side to this side, or to this side. This You can also see the saw marks there. But we're going to do this side. And once we square this to this, then we can work off the back and work our way around. So that'll be our next side to plane. And we can come back and use this plane. But instead, we'll go with something a little less wide. Uh, because there's no reason to use a plane that's that wide on a board this size, but we don't want a longer plane, so we're still going to stick with approximately that length. So this is the one that we were using was a number five and a half, which is same as a number five, only wider. And um, I don't know if I went over these, but basically we have here... A number uh, two, a number three, a number four, a number four and a half, which is the same length as a number four, but a little wider. This is a five and a quarter, which is a little shorter than the fives and thinner than a five, because these were meant for students' planes to teach them how to use uh, the work. So we could also use this one here. Maybe we'll do that. That's a good size for this board and all. And then uh, this is the 605, which is the bedrock. And you can tell the bedrock because of these flat sides. Earlier ones had the round sides as well. But uh, this sort of made it distinctive and stand out. And then we had a number six. Uh, no, I'm sorry. This was the five and a half. So it's the number five length, but a little wider. Then the number six and then a number seven, and then a number eight. We're not going to really use the number eight because we're not doing anything really long enough. I use the eight when I'm jointing a door or something really long that I want to make sure is nice and straight, but there's no reason to use a plane that big on a board this size. The other two that I'm going to show you, um, if I have another piece of rough board, this is a, a scrub plane. It's a number 40 and a half, which is the wider of the Stanley scrub planes. And the scrub planes are distinctive because they don't have the chip breaker. They only have the blade. And they have a more open throat than these other ones. And the blade is sharpened into a round like a spoon bit. And that's because you're trying to hog off a lot of material 
on a log or something like that to get it down to the point that you can use these planes on it. So that's the 40 and a half. And this is a beautiful old um, number 10 rabbit plane. You see the blade comes out on both sides, but we won't get to that in this video probably. But um, this is, uh, you could use this for doing this edge here, um, but there's no real reason to. Um, this is more for if you have a rabbit and you want to come in here and clean that up or make a rabbit. So, um, that one I brought out to show you, but I don't know if we'll get to it. So, again, we're starting fresh and with another plane. So, the first thing is to sight down the end and make sure that the blade is parallel with the bed. And using this adjustment lever here to pivot the blade from side to side. Now, also here you see this is that kidney-shaped opening instead of the keyhole. This is a newer plane. And it has the holes, the screws, for the adjustment on the frog. And we're going to sight down this, extend the blade out, and then once I see that line, then I can use this to adjust from side to side to make sure it's parallel with the bed and then I back that blade off by turning this depth adjuster knob and I back it off until it's not going to give me much of a cut at all and then I feel it on the wood and you see no cut and that's fine now I take it and there's a little bit of slop in here because the way this works is there's a stir up here and when this goes in and out, it takes that stirrup and it pivots it. If it pivots it in this direction, the blade goes forward. If it pivots it in the other direction, the blade comes up. So I want it to go this way, which makes the blade go forward because the stirrup, this has got a counter thread so that as you, it looks like you're tightening it, but actually it's moving away. And just until I get a little bit of a bite, that's too much of a bite. So I back it off, get it back to zero. There, that's a mild cut. That's pretty good. And then I'm going to advance it forward. There's a little bit of slop. So you take out the slop till it doesn't move. And then you just edge it forward. What you're doing there is you're taking that stirrup and you're pushing it against the blade. So when you push it against the blade and then you come back and use the plane, when it goes to push the blade back, it hits that stirrup and it stops it. So I always start my cut with the stirrup in the forward position. So let's see what we got. So that's a nice fine cut. And I'm not going to worry about squaring too much. First, I want to get this down to a flat. And as I can see here already, this is nice. I've cut out here, that part. Not here. This is still rough sawn. This is smooth. This is not. And this is not. So it's hitting here, it's hitting here, and it's hitting here. So those areas have to come down before it will get rid of these pieces. So let's go a few more times and we'll see. See how pretty fine still cutting. Now, don't worry if you get cuts like this as opposed to full width cuts like this because it's because the board isn't flat that you're not getting that. It has nothing to do with your plane it has to do with the fact that this was not a flat board and so every time you get an area that you haven't reached 
that will not give you a complete width of the cut. Once you get all the way down, that'll change. So a little bit of patience and you can watch it disappear. Now it's just here, here, and this corner. This is already planed and smooth. So I just sight down. And I, again, I'm not going to worry about squaring it yet. All I want to do is get it to where this is all nice. Right in here is a little edge that it's missing. So right there, right in here, and right here. So I need to bring all this down some more. And you can see... You can hear how much smoother the plane is cutting because now I'm getting more wood because I'm getting full width on the board. And as the board gets smoother, these get thinner. So all of that is done and now the next step Nice and smooth, nice and smooth. So the next step is to put a square on this and make sure these two are correct. If it's out of square, now's the time for me to adjust it. So I have my square out and I need to test this board because we have planed this surface and we've planed this surface. So I take the body of my square and I put it against that first side because rather than adjust this wide side, I'll adjust this thin side to make sure it's square to that one. And what I do is I sight it out the window so I get light, or I could do it up to here, and I can see that this side here is about a sixteenth higher. This side here is a sixteenth higher than this side. So this side needs to come down. So I get it back in the vise, and what I like to do is I just put some lines across it like that, and that'll show me what part I'm taking off. And now I'm going to hold the plane rather than flat, I'm going to take off a little bit on this side and a little bit more. And I, what I'm doing is, I'll exaggerate for you, is I'm planing like this, but not that far. Just I'm just raising it up enough that I start to put a small chamfer on this side. And then, once I get that coming down, and I can see how much I'm cutting with my pencil marks disappearing, then I can come in here and start flattening it out. And I'm just taking off this high side, and I keep doing that. And each time I do it, I bring the plane down flat, so I'm taking off the high. Now you can see the cut; of the shavings are getting wider. And I'm, now I have a little bump right there in the middle, so I can work that off. And work that off. Now I'm going to check it again before I go too far. And now I'm about a 64th off. So I less and less do I need to take on this side. And so I'm almost taking the plane back to being flat. And beautiful. No gap. When I sight down through here, there's no gap. So that is square to that. So I want to explain that this piece of walnut I'm going to use is for a door frame for that uh, uh, spice rack. And I squared this one to this one because I will probably cut some of this off and not use this part. 
Um, I don't mind having a little bit of it, but um, this is nice and dark brown, and that's really the piece that I want. So I'm going to stop on this. I'm not going to go on to these other two sides because I, I need to thickness it down to the size of the door. And I'll saw that instead of planing all of that off. But that means that this part here where this knot is and this branch was coming out, I'm going to be able to probably take off completely. So what I'm going to do now is stop on this piece and start on another one and get another piece one side good and another side good and then we'll probably saw off some of this. I thought while I was at it I'd find a nice piece of uh, this is some cherry that I've got and it's all rough sawn as you can see but I thought I'd show you how this 40 and a half works on this. So what I'm gonna do is to set the blade I loosen this and then I drive this, I, I raise the blade up and I just bring the blade down till it's touching. And then I tighten it up. And, and that will set that blade without a lot of it coming off, you see? It's not cutting a lot. Now, if I wanted to cut a little deeper, sometimes what I'll do is I'll just take a little piece of a shaving and put it under the toe. And, um, and that'll allow that blade to sink in a little bit further straighten her up and now it'll cut a little deeper but I want you to see how that will take this stuff off really quickly and even some of these high spots out here and what I'm doing is I'm basically cutting across the grain and roughing it out and then I'll come back and I'll come this way and you can see how much this takes off very quickly to take a rough board down to a board that you can actually put a smoothing plane on and get some of that grain to show up really pretty. See how fast that took that down? Now I can take a plane like a four and a half, which is a little longer than a four. Um, here's a number four. See it's about a half inch longer, but it's also wider. And I use this one to clean up rest of the board and to really smooth it out. Look at that pretty color of the cherry coming through. I've lined up all of the backs of all of the planes so that they're all touching that board and you can see the length. So here we have a number one, the number two, the number three, the number four. The number four and a half is wider than the number four and a little bit longer. The number four, five and a quarter, which is the student's plane, which is not quite as long as the five and it's thinner. So there's the number five. And then this is the bedrock 605 with the flat sides. And then we go to the five and a half, which is a little longer than the five and wider. And then we go to the number six and the number seven and the number eight. And so there they are, all of the Baileys in a row. So that'll give you a good idea of how they differ.